give God a praise offering. Come on. Come on, give me your best. Come on, release it in this house. Release a sound that splits the devil's ear. A sound, hallelujah, from the sanctuary. Lift the praise unto the Lord our God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he's here. Thank you, God. Mm, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to try to minister. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to try. Okay. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Come, let's get Lord one more hand clap. Praise if you will, please. Amen. We're on a, t a 10 day journey, which this is day three. And it's been so refreshing and renewing. Just tell the Lord that I will wait on you. That I will wait in your presence, oh God. I will wait for you to cleanse my heart. Come on. Cleanse my mind. Fill me again with your power, your presence. Fill me again until I overflow. Turn it over the plate. Sacrificing unto our Lord. Asking him to, uh, to, to uh, just come and just fill us, deliver us, do what all you can do. Anything that hinder you from moving in us, Lord, we wanted him to clean it out. I want to be in our rightful position. It is important that we be in the rightful position. Psalms 1 declares, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, or sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law of the Lord does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And whatsoever he shall do, it shall what? Prosper. Will you turn with me tonight to the book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew 16, beginning at 15 through 19. If you're there, say amen. If you're looking forward, amen. If you're around Genesis, you're in the wrong direction. Thank you, God. Are you at Matthew 16, 15 through 19? He saith unto them, King James Version, but who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever thy loose on earth will be loosed in heaven this is what Jesus said when Peter uh, if y'all know Peter he got in his flesh a lot come on somebody I got some Peters in here come on I've been to Peter too come on all right but this time he wasn't in his flesh because there was a revelation that came from the Father. And what we're looking for tonight, amen, is what, the, what, what comes from the Father. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And I believe, amen, as we do what this scripture says, I believe Jesus meant exactly what he said. 
And he says, what, I give you the keys to the kingdom and whatever you shall bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I believe it says, whatever thou shalt pray and declare. I'm going to put those words there. Whatever you will pray and declare on earth. Whatever you bind through your de declaration and your prayer, it will be bound in heaven. And I believe the church must be restored. The ecclesia must be restored back to the power that it originally had in the book of Acts. Can I get an amen? amen. And it, it, the only way it can is us, if we will come together and if we will pray and we will fast and we will seek God and we will turn our plates over with a solemn assembly, weeping between the porch and the altar, calling out and calling on the name of our living God and he will come and respond to us. How many believe that tonight? Thank you, Father. Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 12 Matthew eleven twelve. 12. It says, And from the days of John the Baptist until the kingdom, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. How many believe that? The violent take it by force. All right? In the God word translation, it says, From the time of John the baptizer until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and powerful people, a forceful people have been seizing it. I'm telling you tonight that we have to be forceful. I know you may have heard this and I, I, I may probably can quote all of these scriptures I'll probably say tonight. I probably can quote them verbatim. But it's one thing to quote them. But it's another thing to walk in them. It's another thing to use them. It's another thing to apply them. It's another thing to walk in them. Can somebody say amen? So the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advanced by forceful people seizing hold of it. Here being one of the reasons that we're here, amen, having a 10-day shed-in, a seek in God's face, because we, those who are, have come, and we have come, amen, from Pennsylvania, have come from Cleveland, and come from all over Ohio, and they who have come, have come because they want to forcefully advance the kingdom of God. We must sometimes be told who we are. And sometimes we forget because all of the lies and the things the enemy is pushing at you daily. You ain't nothing. You messed up back then. He always want to bring up your past. But every time he try to bring up my past, I bring up his future. You want to talk about something? I'll give you something to talk about. You're going to be chained and bound in a, a, a polymous pit for a thousand. You're going to be screaming for a thousand years as you fall. Come on, somebody. And then you're going to end up going to the place that was originally designed for you. Somebody say amen. amen. We need to tell him of his future when he want to tell you of your past. The scripture is right. Somebody say the scripture is right. Amen. Say the scripture is right all by itself. <laughs> It don't need no help, come on. If you read it, it'll preach to you. Come on, you take a look at it, it'll teach you. It's good all by itself. Thank you, Father. In 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 3 through 6, 1 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. It says, for... Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. 
We don't fight like the world fights. Sometimes I'm tempted in that area, if I would tell the truth. Y'all quiet now. Come on, somebody. It's all right. Sometimes I think some of these grown people acting crazy need a good old-fashioned whooping. I don't know if y'all know what a whooping is. Yeah. Corporate punishment. Come on, somebody. Big old grown people acting like kids. Yeah, let me stop talking about them. Amen. And I want to take in my hands the anointing to do that, but that's not my calling. My calling is to pray. How many of you are calling? Your call. We are all called to pray. We are called to pray. We fight not against uh, flesh and blood, but against these principalities, and we fight against powers and rulers of darkness. Those are the ones that we take it. We should take it out on. Somebody say, "Amen." Every time he try to mess with you, every time he sends you a lie, you need to speak back the truth to him. You need to put that word into judgment. Amen. You need to declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Somebody say amen. amen. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. Somebody say amen. amen. It's not through gun and gun. Now, if you carry a gun, let me know you got a gun in here because you don't supposed to unless y'all can let you. I know. Come on, somebody. Thank you, God. And I'll make sure I, don't, I won't preach on something that hurts you. Come on. You might pull it out. No, you won't do that because you're under the anointing. Amen. But the Bible says, and I believe everything that it says, it meant that it said. Amen. In the book of Acts, if you will go with me quickly, Acts 1, chapter 1, we're going to read verse 4 and verse 8. It says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. So they got instructions to go to a place and wait. And wait on the promise of the Lord. How many have been filled with the Holy Spirit? How many needs to be refilled? How many gets going just like you go to the gas station? I go to the gas station. Come on. I, I got a hybrid now. I don't go as much. Come on, somebody. Thank God for that hybrid. The gas price is going up. I don't want you to look at that. Come on. But what I'm saying is the Bible says we need to go back to God. There is a time that we need to go and sit before the Lord and wait on God. There are certain things that you can't have or certain authorities you can't, realms you can't go in until you fit the time in prayer first. How many believe that today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to gird your spirit up. Like tonight, I, I thought, well, this is Shiloh Christian Center, a non-denominational, but you guys are active Pentecostal here tonight. <laughs> and that's all right with me, because we non denominational Hollering and screaming, Sue Ellen took a lap. Hey, Amen. I was about to jump off the keyboard. Come on. What's going on? Something means something is going on in the inside of you. That cannot be contained, that is beginning to burst out, uh, praise begin to just drip out. When you feel, when your cup is filled, you begin to overflow. Not meaning to do something, but you are so saying, Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. You in the business meeting say, Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. They're like, What's wrong with you? I'm overflowing. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he gave them instructions to go wait, and we are waiting here. We're waiting on God. We're praying. We're seeking God. We said, fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Go deeper than the surface in our hearts. Because surface-wise, we can act right. We can, I can pretend for a couple of hours around you. Come on, somebody. But uh, a couple of, after a day, your true colors going to start coming out. You ain't talking to me. You can smile with that religious, pious smile like you all good. Come on, somebody. But what's in your heart is going to start speaking after a while. Somebody say hallelujah. That's why we need to wait on the Lord. We need to stay in his presence. We need to say it's not Sister Sue or Sister Sally, but it's me, oh Lord, that is in the need of prayer. Lord, fill me up 
God until I overflow. Acts 1.8 says, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses both in Ju Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. That power, I'm saying, that power needs to be cultivated. That power, amen, if you, if you try to drown that power with, with carnality, amen, your innermost man is going to get weakened. And your outer man it will get stronger. Come on, somebody. But if you feel that inner man, amen, with the Spirit of the Lord and stay in His presence, the inner man is going to get stronger and your outer man is going to get weaker. Yes. Is that what we want? Yes. Is that the goal? Yes. Yes, it is for me. You should receive power. You need this Holy Ghost to live right. Oh, yeah. You just can't think I'm mo your morality has some flaws. Because there are certain things you're going to be right about, and other things you're going to say you're not going to be right about. Somebody say amen. But there's that justification that you want to do. And God wants to take us to a higher place. I'm so glad about the Word of God. I'm glad about the Word of God because the Bible says the promises of God are is yes and amen. How many glad about the Word of God? In Jeremiah, turn with me to uh, the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the first chapter, verse 1. Jeremiah 1, 12. It says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. We're going to stop there. God says, when it comes down to my word, I will hasten or move quickly to perform it. When I say something and you count on me, God says, I'm coming, amen, I'm going to come and I'm going to perform. Matter of fact, I'm going to execute my word. So therefore, my trust is not in man. My trust is not in religion. My trust is not in my church. But my trust is in the Lord and the word of God. Because he hastens to perform, to perform it, amen? Numbers... Book of Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, 19. Hallelujah. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall not make it good? So when God speaks something, even when it's crazy and against all odds, when everybody say, you, you, didn't, you didn't hear that from the Lord, and you know you heard that from the Lord, you need to stand at that place. Imagine Noah. I don't know if you guys think about Noah, but I think about Noah. Never rain first. <laughs> and then build a big old boat, 100 foot high, 50 wide, and 30 long. It says it's going to rain. Come on. Did that take faith? No. He heard the voice of the Lord. Even if he didn't, if you don't even know how God is going to do it, and you heard the voice of the Lord, you need to stick to what the Lord said. Don't be double-minded. Don't waver. Stand strong. Stand your ground. How many believe you need to stand your ground? Go with me to Jeremiah 33. 14, Jeremiah 33, 14. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. So God says, the good things that I've said to you, Linda, I'm going to perform it. Even if your children look like they're going worse. Come on, somebody. Amen. You got to know that God is in the middle of something. Come on. Because he said he would do it and he is going to execute it. The issue is that God does his part, but we need to do our part. We need to learn how to execute 
We need to learn how to carry out or putting into effect a plan, an order, or a course of action. We need, amen, to learn how to implement things, to carry things out, there, carry things out, to accomplish, amen, some things. We need to learn how to start and not, uh, we need to learn how to finish and not just start something. We start a lot of things, but we don't finish it. Somebody smile, look forward. I ain't talking about you if you do that. Come on. But whatever God starts, he finishes. Amen. How This is how I fight my battles. I depend on the word of God and I declare the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't get a gun out. Come on. I don't do road rage. Come on. Even I thought about it. Come on. I don't do it. Hallelujah. But I must fight my battles, amen, only by the word of God, declaring the word of God. Jesus fought his battle when he was tempted by the devil. When he was in the wilderness for 40 days, he fought his battle by the word of God. If he did it, do you think that we should do it? Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians 1.6, it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. How many believe that scripture? I, I stand on that scripture. Even when I pray for people, people uh, get saved and I do what I'm supposed to do. I pray, amen, if they leave me or leave the church or leave the president or leave the city, leave the state, amen, but that work that God began in them, that he is going to watch over it and he's going to perform it and he's going to finish what he started in them. Oh, come on, somebody. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Again, God never starts something he can't finish. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 49. Let's go to Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, 25, if you would, please. Verse 25 says, But thus saith the Lord... Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with them that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. This is a promise. Somebody say, this is a promise. Is a promise. How many got loved ones out there that does not save yet? Come on. Amen. They don't know it, but God's got a plan for them. He's setting them up right now. I said he's setting them up. I'm going to tell those that may have known the Lord, but went away from God. And they went away from the training, which Proverbs tell us to train a child up in a way that he should go when he's old, he will not depart. They probably went far away like the prodigal son and, and lived a, a riotous life. They're doing whatever they think they're doing, but God has an assignment for them. Many are the plans of a man, but God's will is going to prevail. I hold on to this, I hold on to this word, because he says, for I will contend, that means I will fight with them that fight with thee. Hallelujah. And I will save thy children. Somebody say Hallelujah. Thank you, God. How many in here know my son? I got a son. I got two sons. Both of them really need prayer right now. Come on. Amen. I got both sons. They both need prayer right now. All right? Uh, so my son, Jordan, you guys seen him around. I'm pretty sure you have. You've been around any time. You've seen, you, you probably saw him today walking around. Hallelujah. But that's a good thing for me right now. Yes. Let me share with you the reason why. Um, Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, Jordan, uh, he came up missing. 
Uh, he's the one that my wife uh, was his payee, and the first of the month, he would, uh, 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 I mean, he would get, he couldn't wait till the money, the check come. Come on, he's asking for the money before the check, just like he did me today, borrow $20 until the check, because he can't wait till the check comes, amen, to get his marijuana. Somebody said, it's legal now, ain't it? Uh, hold on. Uh, this is not a marijuana commercial, come on. <laughs> He said, God made it, and he said it was good. Come on. I know what you're saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you, too. Come on. <laughs> well, Jordan, uh, actually, of his own will, a choice, decided to be homeless. It wasn't our will, but it was his will because he made choices to become homeless. Do you know it, it looked, uh, uh, it looked uh, bad? Come on, it just looked bad. And the natural looks bad. Amen. And, and being a parent, when you raise your child and you taught them the word of God and you, you, you loved on them and they was a part of your family, and all of a sudden they, they depart from their teaching and they move far away from the things that God has. And when he comes in here, one of the things I taught him is to respect people and respect his elders. Come on. But somehow that the enemy got on him that he wanted to please his flesh and his flesh has been in full control. Amen. For, for some years now. Come on, somebody. So in the midst of that, it, it, I'll be honest, it bothered me that he will come and disrespect anybody. That just, it, as a father. It just eat, it eats on me. Come on. And so when he does, he disrespects the ushers. Uh, I First I talked to, try to get the ushers or him one. He said, don't let him because he's my son come in here and disrespect you. You have authority in the house of the Lord. You are the police in the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't believe no special. Come on, I'm just telling you right now. I don't believe in that special. If I tell you this is across the board, it's across the board. My wife, my children, this is God's order. Come on, son, because this is God's house. And so sometimes I will go quickly to him when I see him disobeying. And I said, man, what is going on? You are not going to come in and disobey. And, and, and he just, I don't know, it just, it seemed like the, the thing. How many know, anybody got a thing that sometimes rub you, just wrong, just rub you? Hey Amen. You, you, you want to get over it. Come on, but it rubs you. Come on. And so, um, so he came up missing, and, and during this time he was missing, um, uh, he lives in a car right over here behind the church, and he used the church facilities, amen, to clean up and get clothes and do what he needs to do. And um, so, again, this is his choice. How many of you can't make grown kids do anything? How many have tried to do it before? And come on. <laughs> So long story short is, in the time that he was missing, um, it, it came to my heart uh, about him. It came to my heart. Uh, my wife, we called the police after the third night that he was gone to file a police report that this is not his normal behavior. This guy is almost fiending for money to go get weed. And he's banging on the door, even premature of this check getting cleared, all right? So you got the picture of that. And so anyway, long story short is, uh, that night, I, uh, Wednesday night, I, I really didn't sleep. I just thought about him and thought about his purpose and thought about his calling. And I thought about God gave us a gift. Come on. And the enemy was trying to steal your kids. He wanted to steal the seed. He's after your seed. Y'all may not believe it, but I'm telling you, he's after the lineage of the, the heritage of the gospel going to the next generation. And he fights like uh, crazy, amen, to, to stop that, to abort that mission, to re abort a seed in the earth that is the son of God. Y'all with me? Okay, so anyway, uh, I, I prayed and the Lord spoke to me about him. How many know sometimes you need to hear a word from the Lord? Amen. I'm crying out, Lord. Lord, I, we need to find him, GPS him. Come on. But in the mid middle of finding him or GPSing him, and some of you pray for him all over the United States. They pray. Matter of fact, I got a group that, uh, that prayed for him around the world, globally was praying for him. And so um, Thursday came, the fourth day came, and he still wasn't around. I, uh, some people prayed with me, and, and they said, you're going to hear from your son today. So I said, okay. 
Lord, the, again, the word of the Lord. We don't know where he's at. Amen. And so what happened is uh, at 6 o'clock, my phone rang this odd number. I don't, let me tell you, I don't necessarily answer phone calls, period. But especially those who are, uh, I don't know your number. Come on. <laughs> I just let you know because I don't know who you are. Come on, you really want me to leave a message and I'll get back to you, all right? Is that fair enough? Amen, I think that's fair enough. If, tell me if I'm wrong, come on. So anyway, uh, waiting on him, I got a phone call and the first thing he said was dad. And you gotta understand that calling me dad, uh, he has come to a new philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> His philosophy is that uh, he, do, he, he doesn't have a mother or a father, he has a, there's a, that's a woman and I'm a man, and uh, he, different terms he don't want to use. And anyway, how many know the enemy know how to push your button? And, I, and I, it was pushing my button, can I tell the truth, amen. My button was pushed every time and, then, and I began to see him and my, and my spirit was not pleasing because I'm watching out what is he going to do. Does that make sense? What he gonna do now? He's over there doing something. Here he comes. I'm singing the praise of the Lord one day, and they just let him walk in, walk up the steps, and I saw him between this door here. He just walking back there. I'm singing. I want to get off the piano and stop. <laughs> Cause I see him. anyway. The ushers know now. Come on, I told him don't you let him do that. Somebody say amen. amen. So, uh, that night, I was thinking, and, and I was thinking about him, and, and I was seeking God for his protection. In the meanwhile, Pastor Stephen, the enemy was sending waves of negativity to me. It was coming at me like, like waves. And I kept having to, I was fighting in the spirit that night. I, put, I said, that's a lie. He has shown me he's in, the, he's in the casket. I had to say, that's a lie. He has shown me he's stuck somewhere. Somebody done beat him up because he done got bad with somebody. And that's a lie. All these things that was coming to my head, I said, you're a liar. So at 6 o'clock Thursday, he calls and says, Dad. Oh. I was so happy. I, I said, I said, how you doing? And he said, uh, hey man, they, they took me and they picked me up and they put me into this uh, some kind of mental place over here and they picked him up for like a week and we didn't know. Well, again, we couldn't know. We asked the police to find out stuff, but they didn't know either. Uh, so, and he says, man, I, uh, and I said, Jordan, I said, I've been praying for you. I said, that's my matter of fact, a lot of people have been praying for you. And he says, oh, thanks, I need it. He says, I'm true. The truth will finally come out. Come on. So he says, yes, I, I need it. And, uh, and then he says, wow, you're happy to hear from me. And I said, yeah, I really was. Come on. I said, yes, I am. He said, well, if you're that happy, go buy me some cigarettes. I'll tell you what kind I need. Some kind of red marble. I don't know what he's saying. I said, you want me to what? go do what? Go buy me some cigarettes and bring them to me. If you're that happy. He got a sense of humor. He always had a sense of humor. He was the funny one in the, in the family. Until he got to smoking weed one day and it messed his brain up. It, it, it did. But God is going to recover all. He's going to recover all. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We got this on video today. Amen. We are, I'm going to tell you the, what God has shared with me. God said to me to, to begin to speak into his life. God says do it another way. I'm the authoritarian father. I'm the one who, who says this is the rules. When the children act up, the Sean will call me, John, and the kids know they in trouble. <laughs> Jessica can tell you some stories. <laughs> hey, man. She would say, John, the kids are doing this. And it, it was on. And she got to raise her voice and tell me to get involved. It's serious. Come on. So as the authoritarian father, as the one that's trying to show him the way, sometimes a child will rebel against what is even good. Come on, somebody. 
And so he start refused to call us by our name. And my wife finally got him this week, right? Was it this week? Amen. She, she got him to call her uh, sweetie. That's what she wanted to be called, sweetie. And he finally said it this week because he would say woman or this Miss LaShawn. And, and, and uh, just, just enough to try to jab me, to, for me to jab him. Come on, somebody. It, it's like somebody jab you, jab him. Come on. And I just want to get him straight real fast. Come on. Come on, y'all pray for me. I need help. But the Lord said to me, deal with him another way. Oh, come on. How many know God will straighten you out? He said, deal with him another way heart went out and I said I can't base what on uh, I can't be in the mode of the authoritarian father I need to go into a different mode how many know that Clark Kent had a different mode y'all ain't gonna me. come on help me a little bit Clark Kent had a different mode mild manner reporter in one mode but if he see a phone booth, he turns into Superman. Y'all ain't gonna help me. I'm old. Y'all ain't seen no Superman. <laughs> That's old, right? All right, I gotta get a new modern analogy. Come on. <laughs> so the Lord says, when you deal with him, deal with him a different way. So I said, okay, God. I got the instructions. And so I'm looking at, this is my objective. My wife, I, I take my head off to her, and I want to cry. Because she worked with him so much, where I was, I was intolerant in certain ways. But she had grace to try to help him when I would say what he's doing, almost like he deserves it. Come on. But the mother's heart for her son kept this thing going for him. He don't know how blessed he is. And so I tag team her the other day. I said, you ran a good race with him. I said, but I'm going to relieve you from the cares and I'm going to care for him. I'm going to see about him. God has a plan for him. And I cannot sit by and let the devil take him out. Y'all didn't hear me. You just can't say, I don't care how wrong he was or what he does wrong. I got to look at it in another lens, another glass, and I got to see it differently because I got to reach him. Y'all ain't talking. That's okay. Yeah, he does some things that says, I do not like. And I still don't like it. Somebody say amen. But he's not that little boy that I correct. He, he's a man that makes choices. So what I did, I said, hey, Jordan. Oh, no. Oh, let me tell you this. Again, he changed his name. I didn't tell you all that, did I? This year, he changed his name. He going to just tell us I'm my own individual. So what's, what's your new name? We call him Jordan. He's like, don't call me that. And uh, he says, my name is a B. What? A B. You'll be what? I'll be what? That's my new name, a B. Come on, can I just tell you the truth? And so his mother and I try to deal with that. A B? Come on. So, the first time I called him a B was when he called me. He said, Dad. And I said, Jordan, I mean a B. He says, uh, when he said, told me where he was at and everything, we had a conversation that wasn't hostile. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all got children? Anybody got children? Y'all got to 
Okay, all right. This, this message done switched. Oh, oh hallelujah. I'm going to get back to it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to all wind up in a minute. Come on. Amen. I'm sorry. I forgot my timer, too. And I didn't do that on purpose. Amen. Cause, but I want to share with you because I believe God's going to bring some healing to your families. I believe he's going to set some people free. Because you need to look at it another way. And I'm, I'm saying this because I'm walking through this right now. Okay. And so uh, I talked to a bee and, and then I said, hey, 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 before you hang up. Yeah. He said, I'll be out in a couple days. I said, hey, how about if me and you can just get together and just hang out? He said, that sounds good. And then, uh, so he got out. And so I said, Abi, how you doing? Okay. Uh, and I said, man, uh, let's go. Let's go to King Gyro. There's a place on Hamilton Road. They get these giant gyro. I don't know if y'all like that, but he loves it. He loved it, always loved it. Amen. Big old gyro, all this sauce on it and everything, and fries and everything. And he always loved it since he was little. And so we got in the car and we rode to King Gyro on Hamilton Road. We got out. He wanted to order the biggest one, and I was okay with it. Come on. Amen. Amen. He went in my pocket, though. Cause he wanted a cheesecake and everything else. I said, "Go ahead." Amen. I spent thirty-two dollars for a gyro, two gyros. What in the world? <laughs> this thing is costing me something. <laughs> it's costing me something more than my patience. Come on. So he ate it. He ate it like an animal. He ate that thing so fast. <laughs> Then he's going to put it in his pocket, it's all over the place, and again, he got better training than that. I just, I just sat there, I ain't, I ain't hog on him or hack on him at all. And so we got to talking, we got to talking. And this is the level I wanted to get, to a level of conversation that is not contention, but a level of communication. And, I, and so I began to talk with him and, and share with him. And uh, then he started doing his little crazy stuff, making sounds. He makes sounds and all kind of stuff. And uh, I didn't say anything. Because I'm believing the presence of God that's on me. I believe there's a, a presence of the Lord that is on you that is doing more than your lips can ever say. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. And I sit there and I'm praying. How many know you don't have to pray outside? But I'm praying on the inside. God, you're going to deliver him. He will be a man of God. He will be a prophet of God. He will minister the word of God. And many souls will come into the kingdom because of his life. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I sit, I sit there and, and, and uh, he drunk everything he needed to drink and so uh, we talked. So on the way back, he started talking to me about music. I said, oh, he said, listen to this jam. Again, it was mostly instrumentals back in the 70s, 80s sound. I said, oh, that's the 70s or 80s. I didn't even know he liked 70s, 80s music. And I said, man, that's a smooth sound. You know, I'm just talking light talk. Come on. Finding interest, rediscovering pulling, planning into him, looking into his heart, other things, and, and it went wonderful. It went wonderful. I was so glad. And then at the end, we pulled up here to church, and I said, hey, how about if we do this like every two weeks or something? We get together and, and just have our man time. Oh, yeah, I think I like that. You know, because I feed him. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Way to a man's stomach, really, I, I, it got some little, it, it might be harshly true, come on. Hey man, you feeding it right, come on, you cooking. I'm cooking with these dollars, come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so, what happened at the end, I looked him in the eye, he's sitting across from me, I said, Jordan, I mean, I be. He said, oh, that's okay, I know you would, you know. I said, B, let me ask you something. And let me, let me state something to you first. I said, B, I said, as a parent, I did everything, and your mother and I did everything we knew 
that was right to raise you. But I know that you got a perspective on how you were raised. Does that make sense? You could raise a person, but they and do everything that you believe that is right, but they can have a different view of my life was terrible. <laughs> you never let me do this. You never do this. Come on. And so I said, let me ask you a question. I said, well, if I hurt you in any way, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I ask you to forgive me if I hurt you in raising you. And he just gets the response, well, no, no, no. You, you raised me right. Oh, I needed to hear that. Come on, somebody. I needed to hear that. Because LaShawn and I, we did the best we could, come on, uh, to raise him. And he said it out of his own mouth that we raised him right, but he chose to do other things. And I said, okay. He said, no, Dad, you, you took, y'all did me right. I said, okay. And I said, I love you. And uh, so he's like, man, we got to get together again. So we left that, that meet that time in that manner. We left in peace. We left in love. Come on, somebody. And, and in order to reach somebody, it's, it's not that you're going to tell them all the wrong they do, because sin is sin. I'm talking to those parents, amen, who have kids doing crazy stuff or, or, or even maybe uh, homosexual or whatever they try to be. Sin is sin, but they need the power of God of a, a strong family. He knows that we're here for him. Come on. Yes. And so I, be, I believe the beginning is happening. The beginning of his ministry, I'm calling it forth, is going, coming down. Come on, somebody. How many know you got to call those things so to be not as they were? So the Lord said to me in Isaiah 49, 25, he says that I will contend for, for, uh, with him who contended with you, and I will save your children. So the, the enemies that is fighting my son and your son and your daughter, my daughter, amen, God himself says, I'm going to fight against it. Oh, come on, somebody. i never known him to lose a battle. Amen. This is how I fight my battles. Yes. I depend on my father. And if he tells me to humble myself, I will humble myself. Amen. Because the value of a soul to me, especially my son. Come on. Amen. It means a lot. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. I didn't, I didn't have that in my notes to say, but that came out by the Holy Spirit. Because somebody needed to hear that. In the book of um, Psalms 24, I'm, I'm trying to close. I, I see the ending of this. I see it right there. I'm almost done. Psalms 24, it talks about the earth is the Lord's, right? The fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. And he established it. It says, basically, who shall ascend to the heels of the Lord? But he who has a clean hands and a clean heart, a pure heart. And then it talks about open up ye gates, ye everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong, mighty, and battle. He is the king of glory. It talks about uh, uh, the Lord of hosts at the end. Yeah, yeah. Let me share with you is, is Jehovah uh, Sabaoth. Jehovah Sabaoth is the Lord of hosts. And that means that not only that he commands the armies of heaven, but he rides along with them. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me. He is leading the charge. This is one reason David uh, it was a uh, God, man of the God's own heart. Not that David did all things good, but he learned how to repent and he learned how to do all great things and he learned how to talk to the Lord. But David didn't necessarily always sit back. He would be right in the battle stabbing people. Come on. He was in the battle making war. Well, the Lord of hosts is the Lord that makes war. And he, he makes not just send his army, but he gets a part of it. Come on. Jesus said, give me some of this. Come on. Because they've been vexing my children, bothering my children. Come on. They've been tormenting my children. Come on. So I just believe, amen, that Jehovah Sabbath yes. 
is fighting for you. How many got some struggles and fights that you're still fighting? Amen. You're fighting. You're believing for. How many believing for other souls to come in, especially your family members? Come on. Come on. Amen. The Lord is going to do it. I'm going to say um, uh, uh, Jude 1. Jude 1 and 3. Jude 1 3 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the um, common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto you, unto the saints. Amen. We have to contend for the faith. We have to fight for the faith, especially when you get a word of the Lord. How many get prophetic words? How many receive prophetic words? You have to contend for that word because not only you heard that word, but the devil heard that word, and he's trying to abort that word in your life. He's trying to stop the things of God from happening in your life. So therefore, you got to fight for that word. You have to fight for that word. The month of Ramadan is, I don't know if it's ended or is about to end. It ended. The Muslim people, the ninth month, during the ninth month, the Muslim people that endure such strict fasting and observance of the sun to sunrise and sunset. They do it for more than 10 days. We're doing 10 days, but they do it for 30 days. Amen. And I, I thank God last year I was able for the first time to do a 40-day fast. Uh, and I'm saying it to the glory of God because it was discipline. My wife helped me a lot. Amen. During that time, the 40-day fast. But let me tell you something. We are fasting for a purpose. We are fasting to be refreshed, to renew, to be strengthened, to be important. Let the Lord pour in us even greater. Come on. And we want to see greater works to come. Amen. We're believing for uh, this city to be saved. And it takes somebody to, to, to bog down and sacrifice. Amen. And cry out to God on behalf of this city. Because the Bible says to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send forth labors into the vineyard. And sometimes I'm, you may be my harvester for my children. But I might be your harvester for your children. So we need to pray to the Lord of the harvest. And that's why we're fasting. We're praying. We're seeking God. We are honoring the Lord. Again, people travel. I honor uh, Connie and the team, um, uh, Chantel and uh, Rita and, and Sister Connie from uh, Pennsylvania. But I honor Carla Vargas and traveling from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and I honor those who travel from Pickerington too, okay? All right, come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> I'm just saying, I honor all of you, but I'm just saying, for somebody to put some miles on their car to come to be in the presence of the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Can we get God a hand clap praise tonight? I'm gonna cut it off. I probably, I know I went over time, hallelujah. We're going to pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the hour of power. I thank you, God, that we, amen, uh, this is how we fight our battles. It's not by might or power, but it's by your spirit, Lord God. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in Jordan, what you're doing in Jordan's life. Father, I see him on fire for the Lord. I see the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. I see such a cleansing of his mind. And you're going to restore back what the devil took from him, Father. And he's going to restore back to new God. And I thank you because you said you make all things new. That if you any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. God, I'm asking you to send your fire, even a fire symbol on our podium. That represents the Holy Ghost fire. And God, we want the Holy Ghost fire to fall on us, fill us, Lord, until we say we can't take no more. Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your power. Bless this time. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Is there anyone for ministry? If you need ministry, we want to pray for you. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to ShilohHub.org. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.